The main time you'd see plays in Athens was the Festival of Dionysus, which took place round about the beginning of March, end of February in Athens. And over the first three days of the festival, you'd see tragedies. After watching tragedies, um, which were usually performed in groups of three, I mean, you had to get through three whole, whole terribly sad plays, I think there was a strong sense of a need for light relief. And there was a third kind of uh, genre of drama, which bridged tragedy and comedy, which was called satyr drama. And all the men who'd been in the choruses of the tragedies jumped around, dressed as satyrs, um, also with mythical heroes and, and, and so on, but in a sort of um, pantomimic, comic, burlesque of, of tragic theatre and that was to sort of send the, the viewers out feeling a little bit more cheerful. They are called satyr plays because they had a chorus of satyrs who were magical half horse half human figures who were interested in drinking and satyrs are disruptive and vulgar and the satyr chorus constantly disrupts the action with their humour and their drunkenness and their jokes. I don't think they were very valued by the ancient scholars who collected the theatre texts in the libraries of antiquity. We've only got one, and that's the story of the Cyclops um, from the Odyssey. Um, Euripides' Cyclops, where you have a chorus of 12 satyrs, have been imprisoned by, guess what, Polyphemus the Cyclops. So that gives you a typical satyr drama plot. On the fourth, or sometimes the fifth day, there'd be the comedies. Um, and there'd be, uh, if it was on one day, as, the, as it usually was, there'd be three different writers presenting a comedy each. Well, a comedy is the song, or ode, of a komos, which means a band of revellers. And the Greeks believed that it was impossible for the same person to write tragedy and comedy, and that it was impossible for an actor both to be good at tragedy and comedy. Athenian comedy is a strange mixture of topical satire, of very rude jokes to do with the body and sex, singing and dancing, choruses and outrageous costumes, animals, all kinds of things like that. Lots of address to the audience, throwing, throwing sweets and nuts to the audience, a kind of real uh, festival celebration, but often the serious, serious point about, about mocking the people in power. And anything was forgiven. You could, you could mock the gods in comedy. It was a free space where you do whatever you liked. In comedy, neither the characters nor the audience were ever allowed to forget that the characters were also performers. There is a marvellous passage in one play of Aristophanes, Thesmophoria Zeusai, where the central character is an actor playing an old man, playing a woman, playing the mythical character of Andromeda. And he can at any moment speak in any of those four capacities. A distant but not inappropriate comparison uh, would be with the um, many comedies of Shakespeare in which you have a boy playing a young woman playing a young man, from the uh, Merchant of Venice to, uh, to Twelfth Night and heaven knows how many others. The biggest figure in the history of the old comedy was undoubtedly uh, Aristophanes. He wrote about 40 plays altogether, um, and thanks to the excellence of his Greek diction, uh, 11 of them have survived uh, for us to read. I think it is quite reasonable to say that comedy became, uh, became as popular as tragedy, and there's an interesting uh, uh, piece of evidence pointing, which can be seen, seen as pointing that way. Um, we have a very large number of uh, little terracotta figurines of uh, comic characters. Um, a lot of them come from Athenian and other graves. And they start towards the end of the 5th century BC. And they are always comic characters, not tragic ones. It looks as though people like to think that the dead would enjoy comedy. On the other hand, tragedy always retained uh, the, uh, the greater prestige and comedy and comic dramatists enjoyed um, taking it down a peg. There is plenty of um, modern comic material which is fully in the spirit of Greek old comedy. One is The Simpsons, which channels the satirical aspect very well. And the other, from the purely fantasy point of view, inimitable, um, is The Muppet Show. Nobody since Aristophanes, for example, could have thought of creating a chorus consisting entirely of vegetables. <laughs>